Hello, my name is Neil McDonough and welcome to Ample Forth Abbey, which is hosting this year's U2000 conference. As we reflect upon the famous words of John Paul II when he said, it is Jesus who you seek when you dream of happiness. And with that in mind, I'm going to be meeting with and speaking with some of the many of the youth that have made their way to this year's conference. We'll have talks, testimonies, praise and worship and a lot more. Stay tuned. wonderful things about U2000 is the fantastic witness of young married couples and I have one young couple here before me, a lovely couple, Emmanuel and Callum. Welcome to U2000. Thank you very much, it's lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you now, thank you for having us. So would you just begin by maybe telling us uh, where you met? Yeah, so we actually met in a place called Medjugorje, which is a small village in Bosnia. I'm not going to say... Bosnia, yeah, Callum can say it, I can't say it. <laughs> um, so we met there a few years ago, but we didn't properly start um, dating until we actually re-met at a U2000 event in Leeds in 2019. And um, since then we've been dating and then we got engaged and then we got married last year and we actually got married here at Ampleforth. Oh, fantastic. You got married here at the Abbey? Yeah. Fantastic. And what was that experience like for you, Ben? For uh, Callum? Sorry. <laughs> Don't worry. That's my brother, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was an incredible place to get married. Just the, um, yeah, it's been a place of prayer for hundreds of years. So just to, to be able to stand there at the front, it's a beautiful church and just, yeah, feel the kind of presence of, of all those praying for, for centuries was a very incredible experience. And being here with our, our family and friends, yeah, it was a lovely, lovely time. Fantastic. And so if we were to summarize married life so far, Emmanuel, what would you have to say? Be kind now. Uh, um, it's incredible. And actually, I think on our wedding day, we didn't really know what to expect. I think we can, we sort of entered into marriage like really excited and really enthusiastic about what was to come. Um, but we've, I mean, we've only been married a year, so we don't have much wisdom at all. Um, but it's just been such an incredible journey that has been filled with so much joy. Um, especially because we're expecting a baby, so that has been oh, there. That's been congratulations, the fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, we're 17 weeks, um, and you know, there's been so much joy. Um, there have been struggles as well, and that's been actually really strengthening for us to, to lean on each other in those struggles, um, and to be able to, to just see this whole side to Callum that I didn't see before because you know we weren't we weren't. I mean, I did see obviously so many good things, <laughs> but like you know, when you're married, you just see you you know you just you see those parts. Um, that are only drawn out in this in this sort of union of marriage and um, and yeah so we've just been been able to be each other's strength when things have been difficult um, especially with the morning sickness you're very good with that um, but yeah it's just it's just a gift and it's incredible wow, wow. 
Yeah, and it's fantastic. And obviously, there's been a lot of like joy in your vocation. But at the same time, no matter what vocation we're going, the the cross is very much present. Would you would you agree with that as well in terms of the vocation for marriage? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I would I would agree with that. Um, I, I was um, speaking at the C2000 event the other day, mm-hmm. and something that I spoke about was um, um, was the idea of Jesus laying his life down for us mm-hmm. and how that's the that's the pattern that we're called to follow in our vocation. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, through marriage, I'm called to lay my life down for Callum and he's called to lay his life down for me. And then we're called to lay down our life for our children. Um, and there have been, you know, there, there, are, there are times in marriage where love is a choice. You know, there are times when lo- when love is the easiest thing, and you know, and uh, you know, we obviously love each other so much. But it's the daily choices. You know, it's like for example, when you know, when I was being sick over the toilet because of the morning sickness. You know, um, I'm sure it was Callum's choice to love me in that moment. I'm sure he wasn't brimming over with fuzzy feelings for me. Um, but you know, it's it's those choices. It's it's putting each other first, and. Um, and yeah, finding finding the joy in the suffering and knowing that that is actually what Jesus has asked us to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful, like a real sacrificial love. And then, uh, Callum, for yourself, what's the what's the what about marriage? What what is it about marriage that you found most joy in so far? Yeah, it's a good question. Hard to sum up. I think. Yeah. I mean, I think just being able to share life with each other, I think, is is really special. You know, I think in in the secular world today, so much about individual you know the individual individual culture you know we don't really um you know people put a lot of focus on career on money on you know getting all that stuff sorted out first and i think for us getting married young um it was scary but i think at the same time it's been such a gift to be um you know stepping into the adventure of life together um, and sharing in that together um you know and, and taking on the the troubles of life um together as well you know and the cross which we were speaking about you know i think it's yeah i find it much uh, easier now <laughs> with emmanuel to you know keep my focus on god and and keep my focus on gaining um eternal life and yeah and i think yeah just being able to help each other and that is very joyful mm. i think yeah no it, it's 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 beautiful and uh, if you, if there's any kind of maybe young couples that are watching like because you got married you say in your early 20s right to say yeah so if there's any young couples that are watching that are maybe holding off on marriage, that may be delaying it for whatever reason. Uh, what message would you have for them? What message would you have for them? Well, if you feel like you've met the right person, mm-hmm. <clears throat> they give you peace, they make you feel free, um, and they bring you closer to Jesus. Then I would encourage you to to be really open to the to the sacrament of marriage. Um, you know, to let the dust settle for a year right. or something, um, but to really give it to God and discern actually is God calling me to that? Is He calling me? to live my life down for this person. Um, it's the best decision we ever made. And actually amongst our our friends, we are, you know, they're not, uh, lots of our friends aren't married yet. <clears throat> so we're kind of a married couple amongst lots of s- single people, which is, which is great. You know, we love it. It doesn't, it hasn't changed, no. you know, our relationship with our friends. Um, it's actually made it even more blessed, I think, you know, because they can come to our home and they can be in our family. Um, so that's been a real gift. But I would just encourage you to to be so open to to that life of of marriage and to let Jesus, Jesus make you holy through it, because it's definitely a journey of holiness. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I would, I would, I would really encourage Fantastic. And Callum, um, what has been one of the things about marriage that has kind of been surprising to you? Um, surprising. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think for me, it, um, you know, a lot of people would say before, we, we always joke about this, quite a lot of our like senior uh, people in our families or friends would, like, would kind of joke and say, oh, marriage is hard, oh, it's such a sacrifice, it's, it's tough, you know, be prepared sort of thing. Um, but I think the biggest surprise, no, no, not that it was a surprise, but just a, a good surprise and just, yeah, that it has been just so joyful, you know, and just the huge kind of it, it, current of grace that comes in when you get married as well. I think, um, you know, it, it, it is different from you know, just dating or being engaged, you know, there's a, a new element of grace that comes in and um, yeah, you feel more in God's presence together and just feel like you're, when you're living your vacation, it just, 
yeah, your heart changes, I think, um, for God. So I think, yeah, this is the surprise for me is just how different um, it actually feels, you know, um, compared to what I thought it would be. Uh, yeah, yeah I think so. it's fantastic. And like, and as you know, is the vocation of marriage for any like Catholic couples there that are engaged or obviously discerning marriage as well. Obviously, your your goal is to try and get each other to heaven. Uh, what's that like in reality? Because that sounds lovely as an idea. But uh, in the reality, as you say, when the rubber hits the road between the pots and the pans, what's that like? Yeah, I, I, the word that comes to me is accountability. Mm. And, um, you know, we really, we try our best to hold each other accountable. You know, we'll ask each other, have you prayed today? Um, you know, make sure that we're, you know, we've always got that posture of um, an open heart, a Christian heart, you know. Um, and, you know, Callum tells me if I'm, if I'm, you know, being bad and being sinful and like, you know, being way too like gossipy or judgmental. He will, he will tell me and, 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 you know, and equally, and, I, and I'll tell him as well. So, you know, we do, we try our best and we're not perfect at all, but we do really try our best to, to hold each other accountable to the stuff that we, you know, the stuff that we, we you know, that we talk about, you know, the stuff that we, um, um, that we say we're going to live out. We really do we try our best to be as authentic as we can, you know, behind closed doors, um, you know, when we're out at events like this. Um, but it's um, it's a real privilege and it's a real responsibility, actually, that I, I'm responsible, well, I'm partly yeah. responsible for yeah. getting Callum to heaven and he's partly responsible for getting me to heaven. Um, but it just makes our marriage just so focused on God yeah. and God is first in our marriage. He, he comes first. Um, and you know, through loving him and receiving his love, we can then love each other with that, with that yeah. purity and with, and with that wholeness. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a beautiful point you made there, Emmanuel. It's like the the accountability and being able to tell each other the truth in love. You know, and that, that's so important. And uh, but how is that difficult sometimes to be able to tell the the, the truth in love, or is it easier the fact that the, you know because I'm, the, yeah. there seems to be such a trust between you that it's easier to be able to in charity be able to tell someone the truth about a situation or if you say if someone's gossiping or you know if you're going over the line a little bit like how is that in reality i mean we feel so comfortable with each other mm. um and i think the gift of living out a christian relationship is in when you're dating we just grew so much in communication and also being in lockdown we only really had communication to keep us going. So so we do find it very easy to communicate and we have very open and honest communication. Um, so I would say we, yeah, no, it can, it can be challenging though. You know, yeah. for example, if, you know, if we're both sort of um, feeling a little bit gossipy and, you know, we kind yeah. of get ourselves into this conversation where we're like, we kind of check ourselves and we're like, we're not, you know, we're not, you know, this is, we've done this together and now we've, we regret it and let's pray about it and we feel bad and so um so it can it can be challenging but i would say that we do have a real gift of communication in our marriage and i would say to anybody discerning marriage make sure that you can you can communicate well because communication is absolutely key in your marriage and being able to be open and honest with each other about everything and anything is just so so important yeah, um, yeah, yeah. so communication is a real gift yeah, thanks, Manuel. It's fantastic. And uh, Callum, for yourself, uh, would, what's the importance of your has been the importance of your prayer life in your marriage? Uh, yeah, I think it's it's everything really. Um, you know, I think yeah, even just on an individual level, um, the day to day, you know, struggles and, and things that you come up against, um, prayer is absolutely um, essential to that. And I think, um, yeah, it, like. You know, like I was saying earlier, people say that marriage isn't easy, and, and there is parts of it that, that are challenging. But I think you know, bringing prayer into that and, and bringing God into those things that you just, yeah, I think you just have to let go sometimes. Some of the you maybe bigger issues, like maybe it's financial, or you know, you want to move house, or um, you know, if you're we're about to start a family, you know, <laughs> how are all these things you know going to fall into place? And I think just being able to, to lean into God um, and and trust that He's going to um, look after it and, and and praying into those situations, um, I think is is absolutely vital. Because if you don't if you don't do that, then it's just you <laughs> trying to deal with all these issues, and and ultimately, yeah, we we fall and, and we struggle with that. So 
um, yeah, I think it's been essential to, to mm. our marriage yeah, so yeah, far. Yeah, yeah, no, like it's been absolutely fantastic. The things that you've shared, and I'm, I, I know for sure that somebody watching this is going to be touched. Their hearts are going to be touched by your honesty and your integrity as well about talking about the the reality of marriage as well. And uh, I can say personally, anyways, that you make a fantastic partnership and team. And uh, I wish you a fruitful weekend here at Ampleforth Abbey, the place where you got married. And thank you very much for your time. God bless you both. Thank you. I've been brought up in UT2000. I've literally been coming my whole life. Um, and I've grown up in a Catholic family. Shock, if I've been coming to UT2000. Um, and we went to church every Sunday throughout my childhood. And I had a faith. I believed in Jesus. I, I you know, I, I, I got it. I understood it. Um, but then I went to university in 2015. And I behaved really, really badly. I got massively into the university culture and everything that has to offer. I went to Leeds University. Um, I, won't, I won't be specific about the things that I got into, but you can probably fill in the gaps. Um, I decided to, um, to, really, to really invest um, in friendships and, and, and people and in time um, that spent a lot of time with these things that placed nightlife and all that stuff above Jesus. And I made daily choices to follow a destructive lifestyle. I got into a really damaging relationship in my first year. Um, which I felt completely worthless in. And I thought this was normal. I thought that getting blind drunk was perfectly normal way to behave. I thought that this relationship that I was in, that you couldn't even call a relationship, um, was normal. You know, these things in my life became normal. And this behavior continued into my second year at university. Um, however, I would still go to mass on Sunday. I'd still go to Mass, I'd, I'd actually pray, and um, I'd pray, um, I'd go on retreats like this, and I'd go on pilgrimages. But this wasn't enough. My misbehaviour wasn't suddenly forgotten, because I went to Mass, and I prayed, and I turned up to UC 2000. I was still doing all this stuff when I went back to university. My actions showed that I did not believe that a life with Jesus was worth it. My lukewarmness and ignorance to the truth took my sight from Jesus. I would justify my behavior, but like, oh, but getting drunk is so fun. And oh, it's fine, I love my boyfriend, so I can sleep with him, that's fine. Oh, God will forgive me, he loves me so much, he'll forgive me, it'll be fine. All these words just to justify my sinful and loveless behavior. Is it, was it enough for me to just go to church on Sunday, go on retreats and pilgrimages, and even pray when I was behaving like this. No, the daily stuff really, really matters. Having a Jesus structured schedule really matters. Yes, of course, God is there. He is so present in the mass, in prayer, on retreats, on pilgrimages, he is there and he works so powerfully through these things. But we need to check ourselves. We need to take responsibility for our actions and our sin and decide whether we want God or if we don't. In John's gospel, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. So there is no way of accessing eternal life except through Jesus. There is no way of, of accessing that relationship with God except through Jesus. There's no alternative. Jesus is the only way that we can live a life of light and of true love. So do not be deceived by the world. Do not be deceived by the world. Trust in God. Trust in the seemingly unpopular route to happiness and true fulfillment. You will not be disappointed. However, making choices for Jesus comes at a cost. It means that we have to start letting go of things that feed into our identity, our reputations, our habits, some friendships, some behaviours. 
things started to change for me in 2017 when I went to the Medjugorje Youth Festival. Can I hear a cheer for everybody who went to that this year? Okay, so um, I went there in 2017 with my sister Chiara and my brother Max. And um, for those of you who don't know Medjugorje, that's absolutely fine. Um, it's a small village in Bosnia, Herzegovina, I definitely said that wrong, um, where Our Lady has been appearing to six visionaries since 1981. And every year, there is a gathering of 50,000 young people um, from all over the world who join together to worship, to celebrate mass, um, to pilgrimage. And at this time in my life, when I went there for the first time to the youth festival, I was at the end of my second year at university. I was in a non-Christian, non-chaste relationship, and I wasn't particularly enthusiastic about my faith. I was very happy with my life, with my reputation. I loved my reputation. I loved it. I loved the world. I was in the thick of university life, but I went to Medjugorje, a place that was offering a very different lifestyle to the one that I was currently consumed in. People were free. People didn't care what other people thought about them. They were joyful. They were committed to this life of discipleship, of following Jesus. And I felt very different to them, but strangely, very at home with them at the same time. So during this week, nothing particularly dramatic happened. Apart from I went to confession for the first time in a long time and I just, I felt like I wanted to be honest. I wanted to be really honest about the life that I had been living for the last few years. And I sat with this priest and I just poured my heart out to him. It just all came out of me. I was sobbing and I was being so honest, the most honest I'd ever been with anybody. And that priest met me with such mercy and forgiveness. I will never forget the look in his face when I said my sins and he just looked at me and he smiled at me. And without me knowing it, this moment changed me in a subtle way. Um, however, despite this healing and forgiveness that I received in the sacrament of confession, I wasn't ready, nor did I want to give up the lifestyle that I had been living. I didn't want to stop the late nights out I didn't want to stop being the person that everybody loved going on a night out with because of my reckless behavior. I didn't want to step away from the relationship that I was in at the time. I wasn't ready to say no to the world. I didn't want to. I still thought that that was the way I was going to be happy. I wasn't ready to, to forego my reputation and become a real Catholic. No way. I didn't want it. However, when I, when I went back to uni, um, in my third year, I felt somehow different, but I didn't want to admit it. Throughout the beginning of my third year, I was becoming disarmed. My relationship was falling to pieces. My mental health became really poor to the point where I literally had a breakdown. And I felt like my life was falling apart. But it was in these low moments, it was at rock bottom when I could finally look up. Sometimes Jesus does that. Sometimes he allows us to suffer, to get to a place where things literally can't get any worse so that he can be who he says he is. So what we do now really matters. We simply cannot put God in a box and save him for these mountaintop moments. He has so much more for us. He has an everyday life where he wants to grow in a relationship with us. He wants us to get to know him. Now is not the time to be lukewarm. Now is not the time to be half in, half out. He deserves for us to be all in for him. No compromises. So I invite you this weekend to be open. At the Medjugorje Youth Festival, um, I heard a priest say in his homily, to be open is to be ready to hear something different. To be open is to be ready to hear something different. So I encourage you, be ready to hear something different this weekend. Be open to making some potentially radical choices that you never thought you could make. Be ready to be taken on a journey of renewal, of refreshment, of change. He wants to make you a new creation. He wants to set you on the flight path and equip you with all that you need to be a disciple.
in order to allow ourselves to live a life that is more than what the world offers, we must learn to put him first. He put us first when he died on the cross for us. He died for us because he loves us. And through this, he teaches us what true love looks like. So I just mentioned about being open. And um, my sisters and I, we do something called a word for the year every year. So in the last few months of a year, we pray about a word that's going to be our word for the year. We've done it for the last four or five years. And um, my word for the year was open. And I thought at the time, oh, I know what's coming. God's going to give me so many gifts. I'm going to be on top of my game. I'm just going to be so open and I'm just going to be so full of the Holy Spirit. (laughs) But actually, I really didn't know what was coming. I really didn't know what was coming. As I said earlier, I'm 17 weeks pregnant and the first trimester was really hard. It was full of sickness, of exhaustion, of suffering. And instead of fixing my eyes on heaven throughout it all, um, I would have been a really holy person if I did that. I didn't do that at all. Um, I was frustrated. It was really hard. But it was only upon a lot of reflection and wrestling with this sickness that I realized that was how Jesus was inviting me to be open, to share in his cross and to deepen my relationship with him through this suffering. But at the time, I was so resistant to it. But in fact, through my suffering, Jesus was teaching me how to suffer for the sake of the one he was teaching me how to love. He was teaching me how to lay my life down for my child, the way he laid his life down for us. To be ready to lay my life down, to be open to laying my life down. He was teaching me to hear something different, to be open to what he had for me. He was teaching me what love is, how to truly love, a love that is so opposite to the world, a love which is selfless, not selfish, which is not indulgent, a love which does not control or manipulate, a love which is not just a pleasurable feeling, a love which is a laying down of my life. So this weekend, we have a choice. You have a choice. Every person in this room has a choice. I had the choice in 2017 to 2018 when I came to a Youth 2000 event um, over the new year in London. And at this point in my life, I was living deep in sin and Jesus was definitely not my priority. The only reason I went on this retreat was because Kiara, my sister, encouraged me to come with her. And at this time in my life, I was, I, I was, as I said earlier, I was in the thick of university culture. I was in a relationship that was not of God. I was doing reckless things on nights out. I was, I was not in a good place at all. And I was deeply unhappy and I didn't realize it. But I was at U2000 on New Year's Eve. And I just felt... I just felt like, right, everybody's kneeling down. Okay, I'm going to kneel down. And Jesus is on the burning bush. And later on, you'll see Jesus will be put on the burning bush in the middle of the room. And I just knelt in front of the Blessed Sacrament and I just cried. I cried and I cried and I cried. And I literally just said a throwaway comment, Lord, just do what you want with me. It was like that. I was a bit hesitant. I was like, just do what you want with me. I'm kind of done. Just do what you want with me. And that was my small yes I said to Jesus. And that was all he needed to radically change my life forever. From that moment, I was changed. And I didn't feel it at the time, but I was changed. And shortly after this retreat, I went to stay with my boyfriend. Something had shifted, something just felt different. There was something missing. I then went back to uni and and again, something had changed and I couldn't put my finger on it. And a few weeks after this, my boyfriend broke up with me. And as soon as he was out of my life, even though I felt incredibly rejected and it was painful at the time, as soon as he was out of my life, this space opened up. This space opened up. And I literally remember putting my phone down and getting my prayer journal and being like, hey, Lord, let's do this. And every night I would just go to my room and I'd pray the rosary and I'd listen to praise and worship music and I'd write in my prayer journal And all the time, God was speaking to me. It was like 
every single moment he was he just had these messages for me and was encouraging me and in that time he was changing my heart and I made some big decisions in this time I was like okay right I'm saving sex for marriage that's it I'm gonna stop going on these crazy nights out I'm gonna stop um I'm gonna I'm gonna just I'm just gonna pull back a little bit I'm just gonna evaluate my behavior and of course, after these decisions were made in my sinfulness and weakness, I fell a few times. I did. But my heart was for God. Making decisions for God at university can be really challenging. But God set me on the right path and he gave me the strength to choose him from then on. And since then, I've been trying my best to put Jesus first. And he has been so, so good to me from healing or being on the journey of healing my most darkest broken parts to giving me an incredible husband and the gift of a child. He has done everything for me. So this weekend, we have the opportunity for our lives to be changed. We have the opportunity to leave this weekend forever changed. A life of lukewarmness, of being half in and half out, is not the life that Jesus has for us. He wants all of us. He wants to give us so much more than we could ever ask or imagine. So will you let him? Will you let him take a hold of your life? Will you allow him to change your life? Because in all of this, we have a choice. You have a choice. You don't have to do this. So, you know, you're free. You have free will. You can do what you want. But are we going to open our hearts and our minds to let Jesus show us the life that he has for us? Because we could go through this weekend and we could drink lovely coffee. We could join in with praise and worship. We could have some nice conversations and we could leave feeling no different. So you have a choice and I encourage you, ask Jesus to change your life this weekend. So I just invite you now, close your eyes. And if you feel comfortable, just put your hands out in front of you. Lord, you know us. You know my sinfulness. You know my heart. You know my desires. You know who I want to be. So God, would you change us this weekend? Would you help us to see the world through your eyes? Would you help us to choose a relationship with you? Lord, give us the strength to want to be changed. And Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would move now in the hearts of every single person here. Would you swirl around their hearts? Would you bring things to mind that you, that you want them to give you? we praise you we thank you we love you we make this prayer through Christ our Lord Amen So Emmanuel gave a fantastic talk uh, called Is There More to Life Than This? Emmanuel do you mind just explaining to us uh, what was your idea behind the talk? What was your inspiration behind the talk? So um, at these events, you get lots of people who come for the first time and often people who are seeking a relationship with Jesus. And a lot of people who, I mean, myself included a few years ago, that are kind of in the thick of university culture, which can be very, very powerful in the UK. Um, and so I really felt called to speak into the idea of choice and um, that Jesus has this, this different life for us and that actually a weekend like this can really change our lives if we allow him to do that. Um, so I really felt called to, um, to kind of 
hit them between the eyes, as it were, to just be really clear about the fact that Jesus, a life with Jesus is so much more than the life that the world offers us, um, especially with um, the culture of the world at the moment. It's so, so powerful, especially for young people. It can be almost impossible to see God in anything. Um, and I just felt like Jesus was asking me to, to speak him into, into their lives. So um, yeah, it was uh, the Holy Spirit was um, definitely inspired me um, in the run up. So yeah, fantastic. And there's definitely gonna be someone watching here who's about to start university. Uh, what message might you have for them? My message for them would be to don't forget that Jesus is who he says he is. He really is who he says he is. And um, at university, you might be offered this alternative lifestyle um, that's filled with sex, with drugs, with um, lots and lots of drinking, with um, an absence of God. And I would just encourage you, a life with Jesus is so much better than a life of all that stuff. There's no amount of alcohol, um, no amount of possessions, um, no hookup could ever, ever replace the love that Jesus has for you. So I would just encourage you to, to find, if you can, find um, a Christian community. Um, I know that in all different, uni um, different universities, there, there is a Catholic, there's a Christian union, there's a local church, um, and also there's Youth 2000, which is a national, a national community of young people. So all you need to do, type into Google Youth 2000, there's community right there for you if you're struggling to find community at university. Um, but yeah, I, I would encourage you to, to get some Christian friends and um, to not forget about Jesus because he is who he says he is. Yeah, beautiful. And uh, what would you have to say about the importance of friendship, especially in the Christian life? You know, of course, uh, you're married to Callum, but at the same time, uh, friends, how important is that for you? Oh yeah, Christian friends is so important. I, I mean, there's no way I would be as into my faith, as passionate about my faith, if it wasn't for the Christian friends that have that God has put into my life. Um, there's one particular person who has been mentoring me since I kind of started coming back to my faith. And without that relationship with her and without that discipleship from her, um, there is no way I'd be where I am. So it, community, friendship, um, accountability from other people is so, so important. Um, and, you know, we're so blessed that we have so many Christian friends. And actually, we look around here, there's nearly 600, pe 600 young people here. And we've made so many new friends this weekend. And it's just finding that connection, that connection of, a, of, a, of common values um, with people is just so strengthening and so encouraging. Beautiful, yeah, iron sharpens iron. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And so Callum, you were at your wife's talk. Uh, any takeaways? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, um, one of the most striking things, because there's so many people that come to these um, retreats um, for years and years and years, and uh, and I was one of them. Um, they just kind of go through the motions, you know, maybe we'll go to, to confession um, and say some of your sins, or, you know, you'll, um, yeah, you just kind of go have coffee, socialize, you have a nice weekend, but you don't really enter into it and it's fullness. You don't really let God change your life um, in the way that, that he wants to. Um, and I think for me, just that idea that we that we all um, have a choice every time we come to one of these weekends to, to have a new encounter with God, to open our hearts um, in a new way. And I thought that was a really, yeah, a really powerful message um, for people, especially those of us like myself who've come for many times to these retreats as well. I thought it was really, yeah, very powerful. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. And just look, yeah, Emmanuel, your, your honesty and the way that you were able to give account of uh, and witness to your own testimony and your own journey, I'm sure it's touched uh, many hearts and I wish you all the best as well in your speaking ministry and whatever the, the plans that the Lord has for you both. Thank God you. bless you both. Thank you. The bread of your body, the wine your blood, Sweet communion, you set a table for us. The crucified Jesus, no greater love than your bread, your body, and the wine, your blood.
in your hand, the wound in your side. Thirty-nine lashes brought me back to life. And before resurrection, there was a grave. In hell there was a battle, and my life was searching for answers? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World.